Hello. Hi. All right. Dude, sweet jumpsuit. Thanks, man. It's pretty slick. I mean, for having literally zero dollars, how do I crouch? You, uh, control. control. Oh, I can go prone? Yeah. Like oh, this is how I'm style. doing the whole recording here. <laughs> Just crouched like a terrifying goblin. Hello! <laughs> My liege! Where do you need me to clean? Go away. <laughs> God, get, out, get away from me, freak! <laughs> Damn. Freaking goblins. Oh Always my getting God. around. Wow, that's loud. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn that down. Oh, I love nope, it though. That's that's text messages. I don't wanna answer those. You know what? We need to back out and we need to put proximity chat on. It's the only way to play this properly. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely pass on that. So Water tone? Yeah, the, the water's got a real attitude about it. <laughs> real fucking stingy, this water, you know? Yeah. Switch nozzles. Dude, I could do that with the wheel. Why would I do that Some something else? Change stance. Oh, if you right-click, it just, like, auto-sprays. Oh, oh, that's much easier than me holding this button down. Yeah, see, these are the things we learn together, Tyler. This is a family event now. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna go straight for family friendly right here. Absolutely. So, Brian, why have you called this meeting of us? Uh, I mean, if that's your way of segueing into what I really wanted to talk about, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Segways are weird, huh? Anyways. <laughs> this is the best way, I mean, kind of diving off of, like, what Markiplier's been doing here. Um, is the whole power wash pals thing, right? It's just kind of like sitting down and actually talking to each other and using it as an opportunity to get to know each other. Oh, this and by the way, if you don't know, R is how you rotate the nozzle. I did see that, yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. This is a great time to tell you that Taylor loves Markiplier's power wash simulator videos and <laughs> hates this new power wash pals segment. Really? She's like, I don't like when he's serious. I want him to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's definitely not funny during these. He's very serious he's about very this. He's very serious, yes. He takes this very seriously. This is his most important project <laughs> ever. Um, but, I mean, that. so kind of diving into that aspect of it is, like, I wanted to talk more about, like, us as people, you know, taking more of a serious tone, mostly so that Taylor won't, Taylor won't watch my content, you know? Right, right. Don't worry, she yeah. won't anyway. I know she's a dedicated <laughs> fan, and I really hate to, like, put her off, but... You know, she was your number here. one fan she before was. this. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. She'll get over it. She'll watch through because that's the kind of gal she is. I know. And uh, just, just you know, to throw this out here, like, Taylor, you know, because I know you're going to watch this one. Make sure you're, you're, subtri you're subscribed to the big mayonnaise experience, you know. Yeah. That is the commission that I take for uh, doing your guys' wedding for you. Zero cost. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's the cost for That's it? the cost. You have to be, oh. yeah. That's way cheaper than what I was planning on doing. Tyler, press and hold C. Or just press C, I guess. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, so you don't just, like, have to move like how people don't move. You can right. move how, like, people can <laughs> You move. can use your wrists instead of, like, holding the power washer like a gun. Anyways, so we're supposed to be getting to know each yeah, other. Yeah, so something. anyway, back to back to the point of this whole power wash series here, you know? Um, I guess that, so I, we kind of talked about it off screen here, but to kind of catch the fans up, you know, my loyal viewers. Um, right. The idea here is to, like, kind of introduce the people that I, I stream with as opposed to just throwing them into the fire and seeing how they do. Actually kind of uh, talking to the people. And, and letting them introduce themselves and kind of let everybody get to know them on more of a personal basis. That way they're not just watching me stream with just random people, but kind of like getting to know the people that I'm streaming with and learning more about like why they're interested in this kind of stuff, what attracts them to certain kinds of games and uh, kind of where they're headed in, <clears throat> sorry, where they're headed in their own individual lives. 
because right. <clears throat> like you and I are a little bit more serious about I mean I'm I'm vastly more serious than, than anybody that I stream with or play with. <laughs> yes, but, yes uh, you are taking a very serious tone to this. Right. Um but a lot of the people that I, I play with, they have, you know, it's just like their own lives and this is just something that they're doing to not necessarily help me and support the channel, but, you know, something that they do more in their casual free time. Whereas they right. may not actually be interested in you know, content creation or streaming. But that's kind of what makes them is more more interesting people on the side is that they have their own lives outside of this content. Meanwhile, you, know, you are only the content. Whereas I am just the content, you know. We don't need to talk what? about me personally. <laughs> My literal name is now Big Man is. I changed it. <laughs> Yeah, they full gave commitment. Me at the courthouse. <laughs> full commitment here, you know. But uh, so anyway, that being said, um, so something that my my loyal fans may not know about you in particular is that before this, you were really hot and heavy into a personal trainer direction. Yeah, essentially, all that was because uh, you know I enjoy fitness quite a bit. I like to think that I'm. A little bit more physically capable than some. Yeah, I God. mean, just to, just, just to put a number on it here, like, what is your just bench? Just looking at you over there, just crouched with that <laughs> crouch. Hold on, hold on. There we go. This is the Oof. winner here. <laughs> it's terrifying. The master demands a clean patio. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, Jesus. So anyway. Jarring to just turn the corner to see that. <laughs> So anyway, back uh, what, to what uh, you ask me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, just to put a number on it here, I mean, just to because not everybody who knows, not everybody knows about fitness and you know what the strength levels are actually about. Right. Um, everybody just thinks of like bench press as being the the premier thing, right? Right, right, right. Um, what is your bench though? That way, everybody can know exactly how strong you are. Um. So I maxed bench. Um. I want to say June was the last time I maxed bench, and it was uh, 275, which isn't too shabby. Yeah, that's not bad. 1.7-ish of my body weight, which is, if they say that if you can lift your own body weight on bench, you're relatively strong, so yeah. I'll take that. Proportionally strong. But, yeah, the whole thing of, like, a lot of people, especially fitness people like to you know just exercise but i also and i feel like you relate to this you like teaching as well right of something that you're passionate about and that's something that i really have always liked doing so whenever i was like when i used to do crossfit i used to just help people out because you see a lot of interesting characters doing crossfit <laughs> so it's probably better to step in to help so they don't hurt themselves you know and i and so that is the mentality I've always seen out of CrossFit people is that anytime you do something incorrectly, it's like, oh, that's just CrossFit, you know? Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> And you look at, like, the professionals at CrossFit, it's like, yeah, their form is impeccable. That's why they don't get hurt. <laughs> you're an accountant, so you're right. probably going to need some help. <laughs> you're going to need a little advice here, buddy. But... And that is, so that I was, mean, especially getting more and more into heavier lifting here. I mean, because when I hit oh, my yeah. max there in uh, June, which for all my loyal viewers, I'm very proud to announce I finally hit over 200 on bench. I hit 205 oh, yeah. for one. Yeah. Hey. I'm happy enough with that. And you were my witness to that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it was a very clean lift. So can't be upset. You didn't like almost kill yourself doing it. So <laughs> it's good to see like good form with heavy lifting. Right. Which is rare, especially nowadays. Yes, yes, it is. And that, because everybody focuses on the one rep max. And mm -hmm. I've just, I've never even liked doing those because I just, I feel like they're dangerous, you know? <laughs> and, and they, they are to a certain sure. degree, you know, because you're, you are pushing your body as far as it can possibly go. And it's good to do that like once or twice a year to get a gauge on your strength level. But as far as actually, right. um, doing that in practice i just i don't like the idea of it yeah and the biggest trend right now is uh till failure so yeah whatever repetition till failure or close to failure is what they recommend not necessarily to failure because that can get dangerous but 
you know, pushing yourself those extra couple reps to really get that hypertrophy. And I, I would disagree with that statement. It's dangerous, sure, if you're doing it by yourself. Going to yeah. failure if you have a partner with you is perfectly acceptable. Oh, yeah. It, um, but a lot of people don't have a partner. Right. And that's why it's so, to me at least, it's so important to have a partner with you there. Is because then not only do you have the extra support, but you feel a lot more confident in everything that you're doing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That makes, I mean, that, it's a logical sense. It's like, you know. Right. But not everybody does get to have that privilege, so. But that's but even only that, for, like, like that's, that's that really, is like, the, the, the shifting dynamic at the gym now, is that everybody is there to help each other out now. And I love seeing more of that. Yes. It's just the There's friendliness. There's a lot more generosity compared to right well because especially you don't want to see anybody get hurt at the gym you would much rather just take like five five minutes out of your day to go help a stranger on their lift right than right. to actually see somebody slam a bar on their throat and die i mean I, that's gonna probably like make the news i mean yeah i mean if you're if you're trying to get on the news, I mean, you can bear witness to that. I mean, sympathy. Sympathy gets you real far in life, you know? You're I like, mean, ah, yeah. you know, I knew that guy. He was always the nicest guy in the gym. It's a real shame what happened to him, you know? Oh, I didn't, you know, why weren't you spotting him? Ah, you know, yeah, we were doing different workouts that day, you know? You no, know, just, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deviate from buys and tries right, to help a boy right. out on chess. Come on now. <laughs> not an idiot. <laughs> but, so that really... Really, the, when I started doing CrossFit and saw not great lifting was when it really started, like, dawning on me that I should probably help people. Yeah. Which is what really kind of started the personal training thing. And then I was like, hey, maybe one day I'll be able to own a gym and do all that and stuff. And then Vaca was like, you're going to go get APIs. <laughs> so I had to really put a lot of that on the back burner so I could study. Yeah. I'm not a smart guy, so I have to study shit. And for those Can't of you watching who don't know what an API is, it's a it's a global certification. Think of it as like a national board exam. It is yeah, like six much. months of studying every day for six months straight to get this to have a chance at getting this uh, this certification. To use almost none of the knowledge. <laughs> Tyler, don't say that part. I mean, super <laughs> important. You need to know all of it. Uh, exactly, exactly. Cut that out. <laughs> cut that out. Editor, please. Come on. <laughs> Brian, my editor, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Lines. Line. Line. <laughs> but, so that was the long time dream was, you know, get into the personal training world. Maybe one day open a gym. And then I realized that uh, just like YouTube and stuff, you need to have some kind of social media presence to really be successful right. at this. And I had almost zero social media presence <laughs> before this. So really kind of been a tough learning curve well, just to figure out anything involving the Internet, really. Yeah, I don't want to go too far down this road, um, but that is a big part of, like, YouTube and the algorithm, is a lot of people, especially, like, new YouTubers, will talk a lot of shit about the algorithm, but it's honestly there to help a lot of us small-time guys, is that, yes, starting off, it's not friendly, right? Like, you're putting in all these gameplay videos, and it's just starting to build the algorithm for your channel there. and. Right. That's the biggest thing. It's like, as long as you're posting consistent content, um, it will, it will start feeding more viewers towards you. Like if you become, and it's, it's so much more, uh, 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 specific than just playing video games. Like you could play video games, but what kind of video game, right? YouTube picks up on whether or not you're playing spooky games or old school video games or things like that. And that's where it builds the algorithm from. So if you're right. playing a variety, that's not necessarily a good thing. Like it's cool yeah, as far as building your need channel. To build the, you need to build a base first before exactly. you can start branching out. And that's why Apex Which, has been doing a lot for me is because as I'm streaming Apex, it's putting me in front of viewers who want to watch Apex streams. Right. And I like Apex anyway, so Apex I isn't didn't bad. Think I think I was gonna like it. I really didn't. 
but uh, Jesus had been harassing me to play it for a while, <laughs> so I gave it a shot, and I was like, you know, actually, this isn't too bad. It's it's not bad, and that that is exactly how I would describe Apex Legends. It's not bad. <laughs> I know it is very ragey for a lot of people, but I don't know why. I don't really get mad at it. Yeah, I mean that's that's why I really like playing with uh, Ritter and Sholi is that they are like they're really good, um, and they they definitely take it seriously. But they're also at the same time really laid back with it and like understanding of why they lost, and they're just really good sports about it. That's so crazy that you know Ritter like. I honestly Ritter and I were really close like we were really good friends in like middle school. Yeah, and it's so, it, it it's is funny that you know him and like how you know Gregor and shit. I'm like, did you go to my high school, Brian? Like, what happened here? It was a weird. So, admittedly, so it all happened, and I'm gonna car- carve this part out because it's getting a little too personal now. Again, so anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, getting back onto the conversation here of like you, right? Of course, <laughs> of me. Yeah, because um, I know you started your your little. Um, personal trainer thing for for a very short time before we ended up getting put on 12s <laughs> yep yep that's correct yeah which that I, happened right before 12s and then api so it's like yep. been like two years of trying to get back into it to then get pushed out of it to have to do something right. else which, and that is the number one reason life. i won't go for my 510 here is um there's just no reason to like i know they're not going to pay me for it and on top of that it's it's six months of my life that I'm not going to get back all for something that I don't even want to (laughs) do. Right. I'm not very interested in the API route at work. And this is, this is my direction here. I would, I would much rather put more work into YouTube and creativity than really anything at our, our actual job. Well, I mean, our job is not a creativity space. Right. And that's a whole conversation. Find something. <laughs> that was a conversation I've been having a lot here with uh, Jonathan Reina at work. Is that? Is that mustache Jonathan? Yeah, mustache Jonathan. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, but besides the point, um, is that this is a what we have is a great job if you just want a job that pays well. Yeah, pretty much. It's not like a great paying job, but it pays pretty good, and you don't good. work hard at all. Oh, you I mean, can I, for sure live off of this money. Exactly. So it's not like you're going to ever struggle with what we do. Exactly. Financially. But it is very much not fulfilling, even in the slightest. That's exactly it. Is If you are more of a left-sided brain kind of guy, it is not the job for you. No. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's hard to, like, when some people are like, why are you complaining, you know? It's like, ah, it's because I didn't really do anything i had to look busy for 10 hours exactly and that's and that's that's worse than being busy by far it really is and it's just it's emotionally draining more than anything it's very draining it makes you complacent and like i know we talked a little bit about it there on on the last episode of halo but like for me in particular you know, I, I know I have a negative connotation there at work for not being a hard worker, but it's like none of us are hard workers. <laughs> no, none of us, none of us work hard. Yeah, if we're gonna reel Even it in for little. just a second here, let's be honest here. Well, of course not, but yeah. Um, but that being said, it's I would much rather put more of my time and effort into something like this. And that's what our job allows us to do is we have a lot of downtime to be creative at work. Right. Like if I were trying to launch this YouTube where I was working at like a regular job, like even if I was still in the refinery, if I was a scaffold builder, right, I would not be able to commit the time to YouTube that I currently do. I don't no, know. Of course not. Yeah, I don't know how much extra work I would be putting in. So I am fortunate enough to have a job like this where I can use my downtime and have access to like a computer and which Mike I will say team did pay for my laptop so that was a huge thing for me that saved hey, me damn near shout out to team yeah big shout out to team for that I, it did save me almost a thousand dollars right there so I mean team bought my laptop but they also bought my laptop because the laptop I was using was my personal one, and it broke while I was using it at work, so uh. I don't really, like, 
thank them for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like appreciative that they did that. It was cool that they did still, but I'm not like, thank God team was here. <laughs> right. But yeah, we do have a lot of benefits to our job, which is what does make it tough to like leave. Right. There are so many fringe benefits to it. And especially like you could do our job until you were making like over 10k a month on YouTube. Right. And that's and exactly it'll be fine. That is right? a like even if my YouTube career takes off and I am making more on YouTube than I am um at team, like I'll probably still stay at team because it doesn't take much for me to be able to edit these videos and do all that. It it does right. suck when we have like a busy week, right? And I don't have the time to actually put in uh, uh, the work for YouTube here, but that's just how it is. And up until I, mean, I do get monetized, yeah. And up until I do get monetized, and I mean seriously monetized, not just meeting the bare minimum requirements, right? I don't see much a reason at all to leave team. Right. So what do you have to do to get monetized? Um, so I need to be able to, well, number one, I need to have a certain amount of subscribers, and that is 1,000 subscribers minimum, right? Wow, that's a lot. It's not as much as you might think. Um, let, you know what, let me, before I, before I dive into that, so you need to have 1,000 subscribers, you need to have 20,000 views total, and you need to have 4,000 watch hours. And at first, That's I thought a this, lot of watch hours. Yeah. So at first, I was concerned that the subscriber count was going to be the biggest issue. Um, All right. But the way YouTube and the algorithm works is that if you are getting subscribers and you're getting views, you just have to put a message out there saying, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe at the beginning of your video. And people will. Like, it's <laughs> the people who are going to subscribe are going to subscribe the second you remind them to. It's kind of like, don't bother trying to bring people in. Just hook the ones that are already there. Gotcha. Yeah. Which is just a really strange concept, because you can... I... I jump back to this a lot, and I really hate harping on Abby as much as I do. Abby was, Abby was in half of my content before I found out that she wasn't even subscribed to my channel, right? Oof. Yeah, and it's kind of like, that is one of the people you would really expect to be subscribed, or at least to double check that they are, you mm -hmm. know? And she says she didn't know, right? Which I could believe, right? She's kind of ditzy, but... Yeah, it's Abby, so, you know, <laughs> right, that's you know, very possible. Right. Um, but that being said, um, that's somebody who really should have double checked, right? Or at the very least, when they click on one of my videos, would be able to see. So that means that she just wasn't paying attention to the videos. Which, you know, right. that's fine, right? I, like, I don't I don't really push this on all of my friends. I just, as long as you got the subscription, it's nice to have that, right? The times that I put out big videos, I do really push it. But I don't, the only time I've really done that was for GTFO. Which ended up being kind of a flop anyway. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. But we had big plans for it, but it just didn't pan out. Yeah, exactly. It's a hard game. and <laughs> It is a hard game. They made it harder. Yeah, and it's it's hard to, to make content out of something that you have to focus on. And also probably have some kind of natural skill to do or pr practice enough outside of recording to be good at it. Right. And I wasn't. I don't know if you were, but I wasn't. Not I, I definitely put the practice in. But like I said, it's different when you have friends with you. But anyway, besides the point, uh, getting those watch hours is the biggest thing. Because, you know, I... I I do make the comment, it's not hard to get subscribers and get monetized. You can literally buy subscribers. There's companies out there that literally just do that. And not that you should do that. I mean, that is kind of a, a really cheap way of doing things. But my point in it is, it's not hard to get the minimum requirement of subscribers. And the way the algorithm works is, as long as you're doing a semi-decent job of advertising yourself to the people that come through, You'll get the subscribers in no time. Um, Interesting. Yeah. The biggest thing is simply just putting videos out. 
If you don't have content, the algorithm's not going to help you out. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, the biggest issue is the watch time. Because even your own content, right? You're not going to sit there and watch hours of it. And even yeah. if you do, that is hours. You need thousands of hours, right? Right. Right. So trying to get that watch time is probably the the hardest thing to do. Because hmm. even just me putting on, you know, a playlist and letting it play 24-7, right? It still gets me watch hours. But even if I'm doing 24-7, right? I mean, how many hours are there in a year, right? At least 24. At least 24. Exactly. So, so I would have to do that for pretty much a year straight to get monetized. Jesus. Yeah. But that's why streaming helps. Because people who stop by for the stream, they'll stop by for a couple minutes and you get that. Or even just putting on, making a separate account and putting on like three different accounts watching your content, right? You'll get mm -hmm. three times the amount of watch time out of that. You know, when I do a stream, ha you and Matt and Kevin and, you know, my brother, all my, my most loyal viewers, as long as they just have it on, I get watch time for that. Mm. Yeah. That's good to know. So, so that's even more important than pretty much anything else at this point. It's just starting out trying to get going. I wouldn't say it's the most important thing, but I will say it is the hardest thing to really get done. Well, now I feel even better about myself helping you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that is the biggest thing. It's just having people stop by for the stream and even just leaving it on helps so much. Yeah. But I'd actually, anyway, before... this isn't about the Brian, the big mayonnaise experience here, right? I mean, this is all about Tyler. This is about sugar tea putting the sugar on me, you know? Doing what I try to. Yeah. So... But... That is, the biggest question here is like, you know, you you hear me talk a lot about like my end game, right? Is that it is simply to move to Italy, have a nice house, and just have a laid back job, right? And I will work mm -hmm. till the day I die. I don't mind doing that, but I need to have something that I enjoy doing, right? right. Whether it's owning my own restaurant, cooking, right? Or just writing stories, writing books, Something along those lines. I have to be doing something that I want to do. Right. Yeah. Whereas I don't know what that is for you, Tyler. I mean, what is your end game here? What is your... <sighs> I don't... I mean, do you even have a long-term plan, right? Well, Taylor and I will be leaving Indiana eventually. Right. The sooner the better. Exactly. Amen to that, brother. <laughs> as, uh, as... I don't know if we mentioned that on the stream or if it was... Or on the recording or before that, but... I am in the works of attempting to have a baby. Right. So uh, we have our wedding, you know, next weekend, dating this video right here. <laughs> Boom. You're welcome. No problem. No problem. This is, <laughs> this is going to come out this week, so I don't really worry about that. <laughs> so I've got, you know, the wedding coming up this weekend. And uh, I didn't realize this. I don't know. I'm shifting our conversation again. I don't know if you notice this when with yours or not. But you kind of learn, like, who's really kind of just a shitty person yeah. when you're doing all your wedding shit. Yeah. And so that's why I'm, like, overly thankful now more than ever for people such as you, Melvin, Triumph. Like, people who haven't really, like, caused us any stink at all right. and, like, have been very supportive of what we're doing more than ever. It's like, I didn't realize how much it was to ask to be at a place for yes. one day out of someone. And Until even then, planning a wedding. The biggest thing when I was having my wedding was like the whole we'll see, right? Right. It's like this is one of the biggest moments of my life. What do you mean we'll see? It's like this and is a yes or no. Like even if they were to say right then and there, no, I'm not going to be there. I would appreciate that much more. One of my right. best friends for a very long time. Uh, we had a little bit of a falling out uh, a couple years ago but we had since rekindled. Um, I had asked him, like, it was the week before the wedding, and I was like, hey, are you coming to the wedding or not, dude? And he was like, no, I'm not going to make it. No explanation, nothing like that. And I was like, okay, well, consider this flame extinguished. <laughs> right. I was and, like, like, 
when we were having the the wedding shower, you know, that's a prim- primarily women plus me thing. Right. And my grandma was there, which is my dad's mother, and she's yes. like, "Well, what if they just show up?" And I'm like, "Well, they RSVP'd no." Right. So they can hang out in the parking lot. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Like, what do you expect me to say here? I sent out a reminder, an invite, and I called. Like, yep. I can't do much more than that for these people. So they said no. It is what it is. I'm okay with it. Sucks, but I'm okay with it. You know. Well, and the, like, one of the biggest things you'll see here too, especially this week is you will see people say, oh, we came down with COVID, we're not going to make it, and you'll say, okay, and then they'll post a vi- like, oh, we just hit 100 miles on the bikes here this weekend, it was really nice to get out, like, at your, well, while you're at, at your wedding, and it's like, okay, is, that's clear. Message received. Is this, is this a, something that happened to you, Brian? Yeah, actually, uh, somebody, <laughs> somebody I thought I was actually pretty close with uh, ended up doing that to me. And it was it was really upsetting to see that, and like, uh, anyway, I don't want to get this deep into it here. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but. people that people that I thought I was actually really close to, and were really supportive of me, ended up being like some of the biggest disappointments to me. Yeah, and yeah. so it's been a lot worse for Taylor because she has like hope <laughs> out of things. <laughs> Where I was like, oh, hey, my dad's not coming. Anyways. Anyways. Like, Aren't you upset? I'm like, I mean, I guess I can process that later. I don't know. We still have other things to do today. So well, and so like, we'll it worry was, about that next time. And that was a whole other thing, too. Is like one of my, my very good friends, he was actually supposed to be in standing up in my wedding. Um, we ended up switching him out beforehand for Gregor. Um because Gregor was really earning the spot, and I it didn't feel right to me to not have him in the wedding when he was considering me as one of to be his best man. Right. Um, and it's crazy how those friendships can like all of a sudden just blow up like yeah within like right the here. amount of time that the wedding is. Because like, like I felt shit. I felt really awkward because I didn't invite uh, Matt from work to my wedding, and I was like I, he and I got really close like two weeks before the wedding right right <laughs> it and was it's like, like shit like that happens and you're like oh, okay hold on yeah just friends kind of came like another one of my best friends from high school kind of like popped back into my life like a couple weeks before like two months before the wedding and it was like i don't really know if i should invite this guy should i you know is he gonna be feeling put out is that why he came right. back into my life because he realized i was getting married and he wanted He's to like, be there. I want a good dinner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, to be there for you. That's what I meant, to support <laughs> you. Right, right, right. Right, yeah. No, we didn't have good dinner at the wedding, remember, Tyler? I just remember you being very upset about the soup. <laughs> yeah, I, the soup was a big thing. That was your that was your defining moment of sadness for yeah. me. Yeah. But, but that's uh, okay. Yeah. I. It's an Italian thing, too, and I don't really want to get into that, but... <laughs> You're supposed to have minestrone, and they ended up serving half minestrone, half chicken and dumpling, or whatever. And I was right. real upset about that. Right, right, right. Yeah. But so yes, big things are happening in my life currently. I do want to get back into the personal training pretty heavy here, um, assuming that I can do my five ten sometime within the next you know month. That would yeah. be great, so I could start focusing on doing this kind of stuff. So I guess content I got, creating's kind of fun, you know. I don't like yeah. the editing a whole lot, but I like making it, like and, making the videos and, and being a part of that. And, and I know I think we've talked about I'm it just a couple bad times. Bad at it is probably a big part. <laughs> is and, I just don't want to be bad at it, but that's okay. Right. I mean, you you have to do things, but to get better at them, I'm I'm not. And that was the biggest that, thing, and that's what I've pushed here this whole time. Is like if you are not feeling a recording. Just don't do it. Right. It's like, work at it. And especially, I mean, I'm going to pause myself for a second here and stare directly into your soul as I say this. All in right, fact, hold where on, are hold you? Hold on, hold on, here. Okay. Meet me in the, meet me in the pool. Okay. All right, lay down. Okay. What, do we, what do we got? Okay. When I started I'm doing this... I'm looking at your this, dick, sorry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> sorry, I feel weird. I just wanted to put that out there. When I started doing this, and I know I've mentioned this a lot, 
I was really, really bad. And I've held on to the, that video for that exact reason. Is yeah. you don't really realize how bad you are until you get started at it. You are a year behind me right now. And you are better than me when I started. So a lot of what I've learned and what I've done, I'm helping you with now. So Which is you, great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially yesterday's video doing the the um, the Halo, right? Like, that was probably the best recording you and I have ever done. <laughs> and we, You know what? It was probably some of our worst gameplay. <laughs> but at the same time, like, that's that's kind of my point here, though, is that we've learned up to that point what we need to do, what we need to focus on, and when right. to focus on it. Like, we can finish our thoughts and then get back to focusing. Like, what? literally what we just did <laughs> right then and there, right? <laughs> we took a moment to get serious, talk about bigger things. And then when, it's, when we don't need to focus on it as much, we can just dive back into working on progress, you know? And that is something that's very challenging doing uh, streaming, because most streaming is competitive gaming. Right. Is It's hard to do that focus and talk, which yeah. is why I'm a lot worse when I stream than when I just <laughs> hang out and play, but... And that is what every YouTuber says. 100%. But that's okay. I don't mind I don't mind not being great at Apex. Well, and that's... We talked about it yesterday on the, the, the Halo thing, too. Or maybe that was even today, and I'm just confused. But, like, Markiplier, right? We don't watch Markiplier because he's good at games. God knows we don't watch Markiplier because he's good at games. <laughs> he can be, though. He can, he can be. be, yeah. But it's only certain games that he can really multitask with, right? He really gets into certain ones, and he just gets obsessive about. And that's kind of the whole niche, is that if you build your, your, your channel around your commentary, you don't have to be good at the game. Whereas pro right. gamers, right? That's their whole thing, is they're not there to make commentary. Right, and if they are, it is like professional gameplay focused commentary. Um, yeah, they're more of like they're doing there to show you how to play the game and what right. they can do. Right, so their focus is not on entertaining you with their individual content, but with their actual gameplay. And but, pro streamers yeah. taking all the views. <laughs> well, that's a whole thing, though, right? Is that that is a different kind of viewership in that. They're not there to sit and listen to you talk in between games. Those are yeah. the kind of viewers that will jump off when you die. Because exactly. now you're no longer producing the content that they are there for. Whereas and streamers like you, me, <laughs> not to really not to really lump us in with Markiplier, but like that is the content that you and I are striving to create is more personal, you know, more intimate content. Yeah, more fun. Like uh fun feeling exactly instead of more of a serious tone for gaming exactly which is you know there's nothing wrong with both of them honestly because i wish i was good enough to be a pro gamer <laughs> uh you seem to know a bunch of my high school friends so uh did you ever meet nick narcy no i okay. knew a guy by the name of adam narcy though <laughs> um maybe, maybe cousins related. i don't know yeah maybe but, oh, hey, I finished the floor. Cool. Woo. He uh, he used to hang out with me and one of my other friends uh, in high school, and he was a Halo 3 pro gamer, like so, professionally played. And I watched him play once, and I was like, I'm never going to be this good at this game. So, God, <laughs> cool, and you know, buddy. There was a guy I was friends with in high school, and I wish I could rekindle this friendship. Uh, his name was John Spivak, and my God, John, if you ever see this video, please find a way to contact me. Um, contact the guy, me from jail. <laughs> the guy, like, he was a weird kid in high school, but not like, you know, carrying around a briefcase of Yu-Gi-Oh cards weird, you know? He was okay, just like, so. he was a gamer, and that was his whole personality. But he okay. was good. He was a professional gamer, right? Before nice. it was cool. and right, um, Before it was a thing. Yeah, and, like, I've wanted to, like, rekindle with this guy for years, because, like, he and I, I loved hanging out with the guy, um, when, because we had a couple classes together, and we would talk all the time, but, uh, now that we're outside of high school, I don't, he doesn't have, like, a Facebook or anything, so I can't find him. Hmm. Yeah. 
And I would love to, to get back into talking with him because that was, especially from a con, not to say that I would just use him from content, um, but playing with him, he was able to be a professional gamer, like pro gamer, and like communicate with people. So like playing with him was not only fun, but he was also carrying the team. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, and I would that love hybrid to. Hybrid of a guy. And truthfully, I, because he was a cool guy to talk to too. I mean, he was real. He was big into games, and he like researched a lot of the stuff on it. He was like a Jack Septicai. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just compare the guy to him, in that right. he knew Ambitious. a lot about games and he played them, right? So he was all into the technical stuff. He was all into the professional stuff, and he was just good. And the guy was cool. I, I really miss that guy, and I wish I could rekindle with him. Well, if he ever hears this video, he will come giving you a call. Why I don't would. you just go ahead and add your personal information right here in the video, just to be <laughs> My safe. My social security number is... <laughs> uh, all right, Maid mother's maiden name. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. But it would be cool. I mean, it's not... I'm not going to, like regret in life not making it it would be awesome to i love gaming you know gaming's always been a really good passion of mine pretty much done it my whole life so it would be really right. cool to make it but like if i don't i'm not like unrealistic about it it's like if it doesn't happen for me it just doesn't i'm not gonna kill myself over it so <laughs> And I think that is the greater difference between you and I when it comes to this content creation is that I don't want to say I'm necessarily banking on this being a success because truthfully, I'm not. It just needs to be a little bit of a success for me to be happy enough with it. Right. Um, because the, the greater thing is either this is going to be my life, which I'm perfectly okay with, or I'm going to use it as a marketing platform for greater things to come. Mm-hmm. Um, which we kind of talked a little bit about in the Halo series there. But um, anyway, uh, <laughs> again, not the big mayonnaise experience here. So You just love chatting. I know, man. I know. I And th that is one thing that I've always hated about myself is my tendency to bring things back to me. In that That's I don't okay. want to be conceited in the sense I always want to be talking about myself. It's just... I have ADD, and <laughs> and so when I get talking about things, I just kind of keep rolling down that road. Right. That's fine. Taylor is very uh, ADD as well, so I've gone pretty used to just letting her <laughs> I do noticed, her thing. So. I noticed that. we. She texted me the other day, and I was like, oh, she's not trying to have a conversation with me. She's just talking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I guess words right now. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I guess that is like how it's always been every time I've talked to Taylor. But, but that's okay. Yeah, she she's wild like that. So you just gotta <laughs> she watch gets out. crazy like that, you know. I mean, watch out, kids. She'll talk. <laughs> she will talk, you know. And honestly, I've wondered if she's ever thought about doing something like this. She just doesn't have the ability to sit down and play for an hour. Yeah, which that's I, why I, she doesn't play D and D. Oh, that's she won't be able why. to sit there. She won't be able to sit not there. Not her uh, lack of creativity, right? No, <laughs> no, probably not. I'm telling her you said that, but probably not. <laughs> hey, she said it to me, so I'm getting you canceled. I'm getting Big canceled Mayonnaise by sexist. Taylor. <laughs> um, Sexism strikes again. <laughs> Big man is experienced. Big man is now canceled. Only you know the good always die young. But, um, yeah, that happens. So I guess the next question is, you talked about getting out of Indiana as soon as possible. Like, what is the direction? Where are you heading? Like, I, I'm just assuming it's anywhere other than here. Um, well, <laughs> is there a preference of direction? Initially, hmm. we were looking at, like, South or North Carolina. Okay. You know, I could still get work there. No problem. You know, there's enough work. I don't want to go Texas. She doesn't want to go Texas. Probably for the um, best. Yeah, I mean, Texas, Texas is, is nice, kind of a wild but... card these days. Not to say that they haven't always been, but especially now. But uh, with uh, all this weird political stuff that I don't want to talk about, <laughs> it's tough to <laughs> like. We would never talk about live or in a recording. It's tough to like want to say that you want to live somewhere where like things are kind of getting crazy politically. So we did discuss leaving country as well. Yeah. 
Uh, we didn't have a specific place in mind because I still want to travel and like see where I would like. But you know, I had thought about. I mean, I don't know. I've never been to Germany. I would like to go to Germany. It's probably scary just based on our <laughs> U.S. history knowledge, but uh, I don't know why. But I've always had a soft spot for like Italy and like that kind of region because they have good weather too. Yes, but the best weather. It's like I haven't been to these places either, so I can't really say I want to move there without going there first. And I'm not that kind of person. On more of a side tangent here, um, I would actually love to go to Italy with you guys. Um, once, obviously, you, <laughs> once the both of us are done pumping out the babies, you know, if we can get misogynistic in here for a second, you know. Of course, of course, of course, just crushing <laughs> Just it. crushing the misogyny. Um, once we are finished, you know, <laughs> I, I can't even think of a better way to put it, but pumping them out, right? Um, I, I do think, like, a group vacation would be an awesome thing to do. Just a week out in Italy. Oh, go, that would be so yeah, much fun. Go tour sure. Tuscany. Because especially, because I know, I, I don't even know if you know this about me. I do speak Italian. Um, um, you've mentioned it. I don't know how much. Yeah, I used to speak it a lot more. Um, and I'm brushing up on it again here and now. But, I mean, it's it's not a very difficult language to learn. Most of the Roman languages aren't. I mean, they uh, all, are like, pander off for each other, too. So exactly. That helps. Exactly. And I've... Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> hello. I'm just over here helping out. Um, Appreciate you helping me with my neighbor's backyard? Something like that. I don't even know where, where the last of the dirt is. I'm just assuming the dirt's over here in this... Oh, that's not what I want. I'm just this fence that post here. has to be sprayed somewhere. But, yeah, a group trip to Tuscany would be great. That's kind of the expatriate uh, capital of Italy. Ooh. There's a lot more English speakers and other, well, other languages there. Yeah, I think it would be a bunch of fun to go. It would be cool to go with, like, another couple at least or, like, yeah. a group. Just so that you're, like, you have some people to go out and do stuff with so you're not having to... This is going to sound terrible, but so you don't have to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that is one of the biggest. So when I went to Italy, that is something that I was specifically told is make friends with locals because they are willing to like bring you to their house and cook for you. And it's that so was something to think. Yeah, that was actually something that I did. And it was the craziest experience ever was it was just this nice older couple like in their 50s or 60s. Um that I had met at a bar out in Italy. And uh, they they just invited me back to their house. They're like, you know, this place gets expensive. We've got, you know, like a wine cellar and we've got antipasta there. If you want to come by for dinner, that'd be cool. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Local experience. I'm already on my way. Yeah, like, come on, man. Where, <laughs> whose car are we taking, right? <laughs> and it is, it is weird because it's, you know, Europe and they're a whole different culture there than us. And these people are generally a lot nicer than us. Right. As long as, uh, you know, you're in the right place. Oh, hey, found that one. Just jumping. But, I mean, obviously, every place has not great places, but... Yeah. It would be cool to get out, make a whole uh, YouTube of yes. your journey. I was actually thinking the same thing, and <laughs> that was one we were going to have to pitch to the wives, but do, like... Because, like, when Markiplier went to Korea, you know, he did, like, little bits of, like, this is what Korean McDonald's is like, you know? Right. And I think that would be kind of a cool thing to do is kind of explore, like, this is what, this is the difference in Italian coffee and Italian wines and things like that. We did it. Yep. By the way, it. uh, very much disagree with your, um your fast food tier list on a lot of things, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a whole other episode here. Um, I'm just going to do, a, a what was it, an hour and a half almost of your video. <laughs> I'm just going to do an hour video of just you in the background and me just bashing your ideas. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That is a whole content thing that you could get into. Like, you see Markiplier and some of the other bigger YouTubers starting to do that. It's like the TikTok compilations. Uh, and they just kind of sit there and react to them. You know, the try not to laugh videos. Right. Yeah. I'll just bash you for an hour. <laughs> I, I just, it was funny because I was working out when I watched it and you just start with McDonald's and I'm like, F, 
Yeah. You're just like, I'm putting it at a C, and I'm like, this fucking idiot. <laughs> and <laughs> actually, like, no. that, that just proves right there that you don't listen to my content, Tyler, because I no, specifically no, no. said I, did. I would rather put it in S tier. But I know, and I wanted it to be the standard. Like the bar for yes. fast food. I well, I listen to your content. Fuck you. <laughs> but I was like, ugh. Because I don't know why. I just hate McDonald's. It's, it's probably nothing against them, but it's just been something where I think I just ate it too much as a child or something. And now I'm like, nah. But also, I'm super healthy, personal trainer. So <laughs> you know, all you know me. Yeah. I'm all about the health. That's why I eat Taco Bell three times a week. <laughs> I mean, Taylor might actually eat Taco Bell three times a week. But... <laughs> so, oh, anyway, cool I think that's going to, yeah. I think this is going to wrap it up here for today. Uh, thanks for coming out, Tyler. And I'd, I'd love to do another episode here. Uh, yeah, maybe in the near future. Thing. Yeah. And maybe we actually talk about like what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> you know what, though? We just killed like an hour hanging out and being friends. So. This is true. Crushed a whole hour worth of recording there. And so. if, if you're really looking at it, isn't that what you wanted was like people to kind of get to know your friends outside of this that you play with? So what's better to know people than to see how we interact as a group? And that's true, but I, I, I did say I wanted this to be more about like you guys than it was about me. And I feel like I talked way more than I should have. But you know what? That's just who you are. 